So let's talk about this, the big ask. Are you ready? Are you ready for the big ask? I know what some of you are thinking. I don't have a big ask. I, who, who do you think you are? I don't have no big ask. Well, it's, it's better to have a big ask than a smart ask. And I really hope it's not a dumb ask because yeah, I'd rather you be a wise ask or of, of God. I almost slipped on that one right there. I'm just saying, it's, and I'm just saying one thing. There's nothing more noticeable for a person than to have a big ask. I'm asking the Lord, when you got a big ask, it really just stands out, makes you wonder, how did their ask get so big? How did it get so big? But truly, having a big ask is what God wants. It's what God wants. And to get big answers, you have to have a big ask, to have faith-filled prayers to have faithful prayers that are, are leaning you into God like never before. That's why we experience so many people going through tragedy, getting close to God. It is what it is. Because when we fall on hard times, when we have a big request, when we have a big, when our prayer life gets bigger and we're starting to seek after him, maybe it's been seasons and seasons and seasons not praying and then all of a sudden something happens and you got a big ask, all of a sudden you get closer to God. Hmm. Well, what if we could do that on our own? What if we didn't have to go through tragedy to get closer to God? Amen, somebody? That's why this is so important. That's why it's, it's like a Christian's secret weapon to have a prayer life, somebody. Come on. The first message and the first thing you've got to do to have a big ask is the title of today's message, and you're wearing it on your wrist. Hopefully, it's called Pray First. You got to pray first. Pray first. As the name implies, we've got to resist the urge to do things in our own strength and in our own wisdom. But it's even better than that. Prayer is our secret weapon that empowers us to live bold and satisfying lives. I want to teach you just a little bit about prayer as we get going. I got four things. Hopefully I get to them all and that doesn't make me a liar. But four things I want to teach you about prayer that I hope will encourage you and, and move you towards a better prayer life starting today. Number one is this. Prayer overcomes anxiety and fear. Prayer overcomes anxiety and fear. And I don't care who you are, where you're from, we all experience that from time to time, some anxiety, some fear, and prayer overcomes that. Prayer keeps us anchored in truth, helps us maintain an eternal perspective, and it frees us from circumstantial worries and temporary trials. Let's listen to the word of God. Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Prayer is a place, in other words, to offload your anxiety, your fear, your stress. Prayer is the place, the place to offload those cares. Why? Because he cares for you. He wants to be there for you. He wants to provide for you. Every morning, I don't know if, if anybody else goes through this, but every morning uh, I wake up with a list. Uh, let me explain. A list. Uh, I wake up with a list. A list of things to do, problems to solve, and things to worry about. Is anybody in the room with me on that? It's like I wake up and bam, right out the gate. And it starts with me looking in the mirror and I, I start counting all these white hairs right here. I'm getting old, everybody. It's just, it's happening. I can dress as young as I want. It just does not stop the clock from ticking. And I'm looking in the mirror. I'm like, oh, anxiety. That's what that is. That's anxiety. That's stress. That's fear. Lord, it helps me pray right away. And then I run my hand through my hair, and there's some hairs in there. <laughs> and I'm like, no. Oh, every time I run my hand through my hair, it gets a little bit thinner, a little bit thinner. All the men said, not an amen on that. No amen. No amen. <laughs> and then I put, I put a shirt on, and it's getting tighter in a very specific rotation right about here. My shirt gets a little bit tighter right around here. Every morning I'm stressed out. I'm stressed out for a list of reasons I haven't even started with the things coming my way. But I go outside. It's just what I do. I go outside. I start walking and I start offloading. Now, I don't, it's just me. I just start offloading my cares to God. Start offloading my worries, my concerns, my cares to God. By the time I'm back home, I'm lighter which is a good thing because I also weigh myself every morning. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like stepping on the scale, exhaling, <sighs> trying to lose a couple ounces. Just anything I can do, anything I can do. I offloaded those burdens and I feel, I feel lighter. It's like a breath of fresh air in my lungs every morning because why? Because when you pray first, when you pray first, it gives you a chance to, instead of just facing all those fears, all those anxieties, all those worries right away, 
No, I'm offloading those things because I serve a God in heaven who, who cares about me, cares about all those things I, I'm worried about and wants to help me with them. Prayer overcomes anxiety and fear. Number two thing is this. Prayer connects us with God. Prayer keeps your faith in God alive, your hope in Christ strong, and your relationship with God healthy. It's the continuation of Philippians 4.6 when Paul was writing to this church and he was telling them this in, in Philippians 4.6. It goes on. The very next verse says, then, after praying all the time, after, after finding that joy through prayer, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. What that means is you're going to be more connected to him. A prayer life and leaning into prayer connects us with God. Once we realize how talking and listening to God draws us closer, we begin to engage and structure our lives that way. Uh, what I'm saying is when you taste, you taste and see. Once you see that a prayer life actually does this for you, you're, you're going to begin to chase it. You're going to begin to chase it. And it's a healthy thing to chase. Healthy thing to chase. All right. We, 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 we start to crave that almost. I crave that connection with God. I crave the, that feeling I get when I, when I spend a few minutes in prayer and he just takes over. And he, once, you, once you experience it, you know, and you begin to chase that we enjoy. We begin to enjoy the intimacy we've always longed to experience with him. It happens through prayer, everybody. It's not through repetition and rote and, you know, Slapping yourself on the head. Come on, get it together. No, not, not any of that. Just by talking to him. Just by talking. to him. But it can be tough. I, I can relate. It can be very tough. Even as a pastor, you know, life can get busy, really busy. Uh, so like I already explained to you, uh, Tiffany and I were, were gone for a month. We were, we were taking some time off, and it was wonderful, man. I, I'll admit, it was really nice, but it was a little bit stressful too. More on that later. I'll share that with you some other time. But it was, it was so good. First about 11 years in ministry, never taking time off like that. Four Sundays? Are you kidding me? That was, that was crazy to me. We did it, and now I'm like, oh, I get it. I'm ready for another year, baby. Let's go! I'm fired up. But, but my first day back was Monday, and I didn't check email for a month. Yeah, yeah. I check my, I open up Gmail, 500 emails. Good feeling gone, just like that. All the good, all the good feels, pew. No, I exaggerated, I exaggerated. 499 emails, 499 emails. It was just crazy, crazy. But because I had taken some time, because I had recentered my spiritual life towards God and began to pray more and was listening to him more. I didn't have anything else to do. <laughs> I'm just saying. I was listening to him more. I'm looking at those emails. I'm like, all right, just like an elephant, I'm going to eat this baby one bite at a time. I'm just going to one year. And throughout that day, Monday was a crazy day. My watch was like, your stress levels have been low. And then they were like, boop. My watch is telling me, you need to go see a doctor. I'm like, no, I'm fine. You don't understand what's going on here. But I had been learning that throughout my day, I want to be connected to God. And so throughout all those emails, and they're like just hundreds of them, and I'm just connected. God, help me with this. God, help me with this one. And I was staying connected to God through prayer, and it literally saved my life. Not literally, but figuratively. Saved my life and, and kept me in a place where I could continue to move forward. Does anybody else need power like that? Does anybody else need help like that? Have you ever had a hard day and go, how am I going to get through this? It's, it's through prayer. Prayer connects you with God. Staying connected to God happens through talking and listening to him throughout the day, especially when things are, are coming up. Number three is this. Prayer reveals God's purpose for our lives. Now, this is exciting. This is exciting. Prayer reveals God's purpose in our lives because prayer can change us from the inside out as we experience more of who God is and less of who we are. As we, as we lean into him, it's, it becomes more and more and more about him and what he's doing and less and less and less about us and what we're doing, which doesn't make sense right at first, especially if, you know, coming to church is new or faith in Christ is new. And I applaud you in that, but because we're, we're kind of trained in our culture to focus on ourselves, to, to get mine. I need to take care of me. God's over here and he's nice and everything, but I need to take care of me. I need to get me the job. I need to get me the spouse. I need to get me the money. I need to get all my problems taken care of myself. But as we 
as we learn to pray, it makes his abilities and his, and his, we're looking at him, his perspective gets bigger and our perspective gets lower. The cousin of Jesus, John the Baptist, he wrote this about talking about Jesus. He must become greater and greater and I must become less and less. Listen, and this is, this is truth from the word of God. When our self-importance gets smaller, God's presence gets greater and our true God-given purpose rings out. That's truth. That's truth. It's not from seeking your own thing. It's not from paying attention closer to yourself and getting your own. No, when we lean into God, that connects us to our real purpose. Prayer helps us become more of our true selves and more authentic, actually. As we focus more on him, we become more authentic self and we discover God's unique purpose for our time on earth. Listen to this. It's a popular verse here. I'm going to explain it to you. 2 Corinthians 5 says this. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Say new person. A new person. A brand new person. A new life has begun because the old life is gone. In other words, finding Christ and giving your life to him activates your true potential and calling. Your true potential. You don't lose yourself when you find Christ and focus on him. You find yourself. You find your true self. Man, because it's, it's the rat race to try and figure out your own life and try and impress everybody and make everybody like you and make everybody think you're cool and fit in. No, that is... That is exhausting, and it never pays off. But when we focus on God and and his love for us and just kind of seek him, our true purpose comes out, and we find ourselves in a truer, better way than we could ever find on our own. Somebody say amen to that. That That is for somebody today. I just know it. Somebody who's struggling with that. Seek after Christ. Seek after Christ. You don't need to seek after your own thing. Seek after Christ. He will show you what you need to know. The more we integrate prayer into our daily lives, the more connected we become with our true God-given purpose. I've told some of you this story about me, but it's, a, it's, a, it's one of my favorites. So I'm going back to it one more time. And if you've heard it, just bear with me. If you haven't, bless your heart. Okay, I grew up a musician. Always been a musician, like since sixth grade, seventh grade, been tapping on the drums. That's my drum set right there. Um, he's better than me, okay? So I'm not playing it. He's better than me. But... I've always wanted to be a musician my whole life, like a professional musician. Like that's how I, that's how I make my money. That's what I do in life. That's what I've always wanted since I was a kid. Now, to make a very long story short, I fell on tough times and God saved me. Like that's the shortest I can make that story. <laughs> More on that some other day. I'll tell you all about it. But I fell on tough times and, and God saved me and I started coming to this church. Like many of you, God saved me. He helped me and he put me in a place that, that totally restructured, reorganized my life. And so I start coming to this church. This is my very first church, very first church. And I started coming here and I show up here and there's this, there's this pretty girl up on the platform, this pretty girl up on the platform and she's leading a missions trip. She's leading, and I heard the voice of the Lord tell me, you need to go on that mission trip. It was the voice of the Lord, I'm sure, right? Pretty girl, oh, you know, we're gonna be, we're gonna be sleeping in like the size of an apartment room. And I'm like, oh yes, the Lord has spoken to me. I'm there, I'm there. The voice of the Lord, baby. Oh man, I'm telling you what, I am just getting myself into so much trouble today, gosh. But I go on this mission trip, all right? And God really speaks to me. He truly speaks to me. So I, I went on this mission trip and I, and I wanted to do a good job and I wanted to help, but I also did have like, I want to get to know, I want to get to know my leaders, you know, in my church. I just want to be, you know, be available and helpful. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's just too much. It's just too much. God speaks to me while I'm there and says to me in not so many words, I just want you to focus on me. And, and I knew what that meant. I'll explain to you what he meant. I was playing in other bands. I was playing in like multiple bands in the community. I was playing shows and I was still kind of pursuing my own dream. And he said to me, I just want you to focus on me. I want you to be, make me greater and greater and yourself. Think of yourself less and less. I want you to lean into me. And so I did. I came home and I, I broke up with my bands, very hard conversations. These are my friends, you know, so I broke up with them. I'm like, hey, and all the music I'm going to play, I'm just going to play at the church now. And I'm just going to focus on that. Within two years of making that decision, 
I had recorded my own album, all original, all my own songs that I wrote was recorded in a studio. And within two years of that, Tiffany and I were licensed pastors leading this church. And technically, if I wanted to, I could lead the music every Sunday if I want. But nobody wants that, <laughs> especially you. We got good singers and good musicians now. And so, but technically, I got what I wanted and even more and even beyond what I couldn't even see because I leaned into him and my true God-given purpose began to ring out. So I have what I always wanted, but I have so much more than that. And by the way, I got the girl too. Oh! Just kidding, but I did. She's still pretty, and she's still pretty. Oh my God, oh, it's warm. <clears throat> Number four is this: prayer empowers us to live supernaturally. Prayer empowers us to live supernaturally. Prayer is necessary because God calls us to do things we could never accomplish on our own. God wants us to do some things that are just far beyond our abilities. Listen to how Jesus said it. You don't have enough faith. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so encouraged right now. I'm so glad I came to church so that you can tell me I don't have enough faith. Well, he said it. You don't have enough faith. He was talking to his disciples. That's kind of like all of us. You don't have enough faith. Why? I tell you the truth. If you would just have this much faith, if you would only have enough faith as a mustard seed, mustard seeds are teeny tiny. They're small. You could say to this mountain, Move from here to there and it would move. Nothing would be impossible for you. Nothing. That's, that's a big statement, Jesus. That's, that's crazy, but prayer empowers us to live that kind of supernatural life. Relying on our relationship with God is the only way to accomplish all he has created us to do in this life. And we need his help because our efforts are not enough if we live in our own strength. No, we need God, so we need prayer. We need prayer. Um, Pastor Tiffany, before she was Pastor Tiffany, uh, was working a regular job and just kind of there, and there's this coworker she had that was uh, slightly older than her, slightly intimidating, very assertive. If you've ever met Pastor Tiffany on a personal level, she's very humble, soft-spoken, gentle, and then she's got this coworker that's like, solve my problems. <laughs> you, Christian, help me, <laughs> and was asking those kind of questions, like, help me, I need your help, and was assertive and bold, and Tiffany's like, ah, settle down, I'll help you as much as I can. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. I don't know how, I'm so, so all Tiffany did, and the reason why I'm bringing it up like this, because it's not just for pastors, it's for you. It's for everybody, it's for all of us. So what Tiffany did was just begin to, Lord, I don't know what she needs. I don't know how to help, but Lord, would you help me know what to do? And God showed her to start writing scriptures on, on post-it notes. She's praying for her and putting the post-it notes on her, on her um, the, the computer screen there. And like Luke 10, 5. And the coworker's like, who's Luke? And what's a 10, 5? Like what's going, oh, Luke, that's the name of the book. There's lots of books in the Bible. The first number is the chapter, and then dot, dot, five. That's the verse. That's how you find things. Coworker's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I knew that. Comes to work the next day with her own Bible, her first Bible. And then over time, Tiffany's continuing to pray for her. Over time, the coworker says, why don't you invite me to church? <laughs> All irritated. Why don't you invite me to church? Uh, what, am I not good enough to go to your church? And Tiffany's like, no, you are good enough. I'm so scared of you. Gosh, come, come to church with me. She shows up to church. She gets saved right away. Like living for Jesus, sold out, is now a follower of Christ. Absolutely saved. Come on, guys. That's a, that's a miracle. That's wonderful. And that's just something that any one of us can do. But the story goes on. The story goes on. Coworkers coming to church for a little while. And, and Tiffany's not done. Pastor Tiffany, as she would soon be called, was not done at all. So she's continuing to listen to God and saying, God, what, what do you want me to do? She's leading a life group. Tiffany's leading a life group and asks her coworker, can I host at your house? Coworker says, yes. One thing leads to another. Husband gets saved. Kids get saved. Today, that entire family serves God because Tiffany got over herself, just began to connect to God in prayer and say, Lord, what do I need to do? And God helped her. God did it with her, for her, through her. That family's saved now. Come on, everybody. That's worth a celebration. Yeah, that's right. That's right. 
And so, so what are we going to do with this? I mean, what, what, what is going to help us to move forward and, and, and lean in to God through prayer? Because God wants to use you to be a lifeline to others as well. He wants to use you to do this. So what, what should we do? There's only one kind of application for a message like this, and that's pray first. You got to pray first. Pray first. You were handed, hopefully, one of these bracelets walking in to church today. And if you didn't grab one, they'll be available for you as you walk out. And it just is supposed to serve as a reminder. Pray first. Pray all the time. Mine's facing me. So like when I'm, when I look at it, it's, I'm reading it. It's not, I'm not telling other people to pray first. I'm telling myself. You see what I'm saying? Like, this is for me. So when 21 days of prayer starts next week and, and me right now, like through the next month, I want you to join me in this. I'd love to see everyone at Lifeline Church right here. Pray first, everybody. Come on, let's pray first. I'm going to pray first. I'm going to pray first. What would it look like if we brought God into every area of our lives throughout the day? Just throughout the day. The key in allowing prayer to permeate your life is to put him first, literally, in every area. Listen to, listen to this. 1 Thessalonians 5. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. When the Bible instructs us to pray continually or constantly, the emphasis is not on repetition, like perpetual repetition, like I'm just going to recite things over and over again. No, 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 no. It's an overflow of your heart. What's in your heart, just let it out. Just talk to God. It's really a lot easier than sometimes we think it is. God wants us to pray first in any and all situation. He wants us to thank him, ask him, trust him, seek him, listen to him, and enjoy all the blessings that he gives. So what do we do? Let me just break this down real simple, as simple as I can. When you wake up in the morning, pray first and thank God for the day ahead. Before you go to sleep at night, pray first and praise him for getting you through the day. When you're leaving your house to go to school, pray first. When you're merging onto a busy highway, uh, pray first. It's okay. You're about to jump onto a Zoom meeting. Better pray first. If you're reconnecting with a friend over coffee, pray first. Helping your kids with homework, pray first. You better pray. Yeah, amen to that, huh? Got some parents in that. You better pray first. It's like the most important one. Waiting in a doctor's office, pray first. Waiting for a doctor report, pray first. Not after, pray first. About to check out at the grocery store, pray first. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Like just all day. All day, before I get into my car, after I get out of my car, before I head into the church, before I head up to the platform, before I head off of the platform. Just, I'm, I'm staying in prayer. I'm praying before I, I move any kind of transition. I'm just remembering to pray first all day. Is that doable? I, I know it is. It's possible because it all happens right here. Listen to this. No matter what you're doing throughout the day, praying first keeps you connected to the one who loves you most. There is one who loves you most. God loves you most. It's not your auntie, it's not your uncle, it's not your mom and dad. There is, a, there is one who loves you most, and that is God. And praying first keeps you connected to the source of all joy and hope and peace that we could ever have in our lives. He's the source. He is our source. And it's so easy. I know it is. I know it is. It's so easy to get disconnected from that, to get disconnected from him and forgetting to pray, forgetting just to talk with him. Forgetting to listen to his voice. Pastor, I don't know what his voice sounds like. Just listen. Just listen. Just pray and then listen. Can you imagine, and I know you can, but can you imagine a, a marriage with no communication? <laughs> it's not a marriage message, but I think anyone who's ever been married or in a serious relationship knows how easily that can happen. It's easy for that to happen, for communication to just begin to just disappear. And we're going through the motions, living as roommates. No real vulnerable communication, no emotional intimacy, the relationship slowly dying right in front of your eyes. Well, that's what many of our relationship with God looks like. No communication, just going through the motions, no intimacy, no real connection because we've forgotten the one thing, the Christian secret weapon is that we have direct access to God. We can talk to him 
any time we want. But we forget. And it just, life gets busy. I know it does. You might be saved, but going to heaven when you die, praise God. <laughs> Good, that's great. I'm, I'm happy. But you might be missing out on the best part of life here on earth, which is connection, communication, and closeness with the one who loves you most. I'm telling you, your marriage is dependent on your relationship with God. Your relationship with your kids is dependent on your relationship with God. Your happiness and fulfillment in life depends on your closeness with God. That's why so many rich and wealthy people or successful people can be so sad, can be so distant, can, can be so depressed, is because the connection to God isn't there. And at the same time, even if you don't have all the things and you're still waiting for God to come through in areas of your life, you have that connection with God, you have all that you need. And that's what I want for you. That's what I want for every single one of us over this next season, is to lean into God through prayer and to get reconnected with the one who loves you most. He wants to hear from you. He wants to speak to you. Make it a priority. Make it a part of your life. And you will have a life like you've never had it before. It will change your life. Just talk to him. Let him talk to you. You can't get it wrong. Just show up. Open your mouth. Open your ears. Open your heart. And he will meet you there. I'm encouraging you, pray first, pray first, throughout the day, all day. It's what you've been missing. It's what you've been looking for. And as he gets greater and greater, your problems will get less and less. Your perspective of your problems will get less and less. Your anxiety will get less and less. Your fear will get less and less. Your disconnection from purpose will get less and less. All, if we just make him more and more and focus on him the one who loves you most I'd love the chance to pray with you so if you would just bow your heads and close your eyes just right here it's the right thing to do to pray at the end of a message like this Father Father I know you're with us all the time you're always with us you've sent your spirit to be with us all the time remind us remind us that you are all that we need. And if we seek you first, everything else will be added to us. And Lord, I just have a special prayer for anyone who feels that disconnection from God. Anyone who feels slightly disconnected or maybe they used to be serving God but don't anymore or, or they just know they're not exactly where they should be. They're not all the way in. Lord, I pray right now that their hearts would be open to get back to where they know they should be. And Lord, I pray a very special prayer for those who, who have not yet experienced a real relationship with your son, Jesus. And I pray right now, their hearts would be open that they would see you for who you really are, like a father waiting for their son or their daughter to come home and they, that you run after us when we seek you. So Lord, I just pray for every person here, if that's, if that's where you're at, and you're ready to start a new relationship or a fresh relationship with God, would you just make that evident by lifting your hand? You could do it right now. Go ahead. It's all right. You can lift your hand right now. Amen. I see you. Hallelujah. Anyone? I see you. Amen. Amen. I see you too. Amen. God sees you. Hallelujah. Every hand is, a, is someone coming to the Lord, everybody. This is great. Wonderful. So church, I wonder if we could pray together. I'm just going to say some words. And if, if this is your prayer, say them, say them with me. Say them after me, if that's all right. Say, Father God, I give you my heart. I give you my life. Forgive me of my sin and make me new. Fill me with your spirit and show me life that is like no life here on earth. Amen. Amen. Come Amen. on.